So in the beginning of the year, I did a detailed breakdown and comparison review between the Legion Go, the Asus ROG Ally, and the Steam Deck, and broke down the different strengths and the pros and cons of each of those devices and which ones might be more tailored for you specifically, the viewer, as opposed to say like me, for example, or maybe your neighbor. Making sure to be very clear about what my personal preferences are versus what I think are objectively better facets of these devices and how they might complement your lifestyle. This video is going to be a in-depth breakdown specific on the Legion Go, the software updates that I think have really complemented this piece of tech right here, the ways that I use it personally, I'll give you guys a breakdown of like what the pros and the cons are and why this might be the fit for you. If you're new here, my name is Dave and I do tech. One of the very first things I highly recommend you guys do when you first are getting your Legion Go, click on this magnifying glass, type in Real Tech Audio up here, click that, come down to speakers, turn on your Omni speaker. You can either do powerful or I know some people just dial everything up to 12. Now, of the three consoles, I would say the Legion Go has the weakest speakers in general. Definitely goes the Asus ROG Ally, then the Steam Deck, and then a pretty big drop off and then the Legion Go. This does help changing the settings. It's not going to be as good as the other ones, but they're good enough, they're passable. Now the Legion Go comparatively is a larger device than the ROG Ally and the Steam Deck for sure. And so a reasonable question to ask is going to be, is this noticeably heavier than the other two when you're playing with it in your hands? flat out in the hand that is heavier enough to where like holding it in one hand you feel much more stress on your fingers than with the ROG Ally or the Steam Deck. One of my favorite things about the Allegiant Go is that it has that kickstand, you can put it down on the table and play. I mean, there have been so many times when I'm playing, say like Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, for example, in the middle of a turn, I'm drinking tea, set it down real quick and I can drink. I personally do not think that the weight is so much of a significant factor that like you absolutely just cannot play games like this. There are times when like, you know, after I'm done like a football game, I'm icing, say like my knee or my calf or something cause I got banged up and I'm laying in bed with this above my head like this and I'm able to play. Do I feel the weight more? Yes, but it's not a deal breaker for me personally. And having the kickstand is awesome, not only using this for when you're playing games, but also if you wanna watch media and things like that as well, right? Watching YouTube or if you wanna watch a movie. But from like a practical functional standpoint, having the kickstand is absolutely amazing. Not only when you're playing with your games on a table like this, but also when you detach them and are playing in that like twin joystick mode, which other me is going to talk to you about because I wanna finish this duel detachable sticks kind of like what you have on the Nintendo Switch and you have this little pad that you can put your stick into and it basically becomes a mouse where like you can use the scroll wheel to switch between your different weapons it works super well very cleanly I don't think any camera does this screen justice this is really something that you have to see in person for yourself it is crisp detailed and beautiful and uh I think this is a huge, huge advantage for the Legion Go for people that want this thing. Not everybody's going to want this and I completely understand that. And this is honestly something that I don't personally use all the time. But if you're looking to play like Counter-Strike or a game like that, I mean, this is, a, this is a pretty awesome way to do it. In previous videos, a lot of you guys saw me playing Madden 24, asking how I was able to get it to run, you know, even relatively smoothly. So what you're going to want to do is turn off your Legion Go, then press the power button and the volume button. So you want to click on more settings, then go down to configuration, and then select this option here, the UMA frame buffer size. And in my experience, setting this to six gigabytes helps a lot. Some people have it to auto, but for me, six gigabytes is usually the sweet spot. And I'm able to play Cyberpunk 2077, Madden Madden 24, Midnight Suns, all with pretty darn good performance, I would say. I was going to go to a nearby park to make this point, just about like the general brightness of the screen while you're playing games and being, say, like outside, it's a sunny day, but also wanting to be in nature and, you know, feel the breeze, hear the birds and play your games. You can absolutely do that here on the Legion Go, just like you could on the ROG Ally and the Steam Deck. Honestly, something I did more with the ROG Ally because when it was out, it was like in the warmer months around summertime, so I could be outside, play some games. The Legion Go, it's been like wet, rainy and cold here, and so I haven't done that too much, but you absolutely can. For me, in terms of battery, it definitely goes Steam Deck, Legion Go, and then a little bit of a sizable difference, the Asus ROG Ally. Um, the bigger battery here definitely helps, and although the Steam Deck does have better battery life, for me, the trade-off of having a bigger display with better graphics, the 144 hertz display, for me, 
I'll take this pretty much every time. Now, working as a clinical therapist, I can't use my MacBook to utilize our client software for notes and treatment plans. So what's awesome about the Legion Go and the Rogue Ally over the Steam Deck is that you can hook this up to an external monitor, have your keyboard and mouse at the ready, and you have a portable desktop setup that can run all of the different software that your normal Windows PC could because this is a Windows PC and a handheld body and that is by far one of my favorite things about the Legion Go. So to be honest with you guys, one of the things that has been the most disappointing for me personally over my last few months with the Legion Go is the lack of good gyro support. It's there, you go in the options, you toggle it on, toggle it off, so when you click it on, you go into a game and it's active all of the time. But on say like the Ally or the Steam Deck, you can toggle it on with a button, holding a button, pressing the touchpad. And unfortunately, that's just not an option at all on the Legion Go in the software and on the deck and the Ally. You can also customize like the sensitivity and a bunch of various options that make it more accessible, it's more tailor fitted to how you want it while you're playing your games. It's not here on the go, that can be added via software and so hopefully that's something that they do implement but as of right now it's definitely the weakest of the three i would say I can comfortably say that in terms of like the controller grips this and the steam deck are i would say pretty much tied for me in terms of comfortability in the hand rogue ally is much more of like a flatter slab type of device like the nintendo switch this one here your fingers actually grip and curve into the body of the device and for me on a game to game basis i find this really really comfortable so legion space that is the software hub where you're going to see all of your games, all of your settings, and things like that. I personally find that to be a little bit heavy and cumbersome. I find it weird that you have a bunch of like game sales on that front page by default, and then you have to click into like a different tab to actually access your games. I find it a little weird. It's not going to be an absolute game breaker. I love the Legion Go as a whole. And then you have the pull up bar sort of like with the Asus Rogue Ally that brings up like your quick toggles. But that is much more like just having flat out the settings coming out of the side of your screen and being able to change everything that you want to change there. I do find that on the Rogue Ally, if you ask me, I think that Armory Crate on the ROG Ally is a smoother, more fluid, snappier experience that gets you what you want. And then you have the settings in the back end. And also for that pull up bar that comes out of the side, you can go into the settings and basically customize exactly what's there. So you don't have a lot of clutter on the side of your screen. On the Legion Go, you have basically everything at your disposal, which depending on who you are, that's going to be a positive. I will say that after some software updates, that has become a really nice experience. And I like that they added right from that pullout menu, you can actually adjust your fan curves and things like that. So software wise, there have been some updates that allow for additional flexibility and accessibility, depending on what it is that you're looking for out of those menus. I think for most people, Armory Crate and that sidebar are going to be more easily accessible and easy to pick up because they're not throwing everything at you. Let me know in the comment section if you guys think the Legion Go is going to be your next handheld pickup. If you ask me personally, I'm in love with the thing. I use it every single day to play a myriad of different games. And uh, I think really the only things that need to pick up the slack are on the software side of things. There's actually a Legion Go Reddit where one of the developers from the Lenovo team is actually pretty active and transparent. He posts every once in a while about like what the team is currently working on, the things that they currently have in their sites. And that lets the community know that the Legion Go is probably going to be getting a good amount of support for a pretty solid amount of time, which is awesome. The Legion Go 2, I think an increased battery goes without saying, but really for me, the biggest things would be uh, better speakers front facing and Perhaps a slightly lighter body and frame, so that way it's slightly more comfortable to hold for a longer period of time, but outside of that, they've hit on a lot of things, which is awesome. Thank you guys so much again for stopping by and hanging out. I wish you a fantastic remainder of your day, afternoon, or night, depending on the time it is you are watching this. And as always, peace, love, and adios. Bye guys, have a great day.